How to make tool animations in Roblox Studio. If you've ever wanted to make sword animations, hammer animations, literally any tool animation that you could ever use inside of Roblox Studio, except for guns, because those are kind of complex and need a whole tutorial on their own, which I'm getting to, then this is the tutorial for you. So, let's get right into it with a few tips that I have for you. First off, let's go over to the Avatar tab and in click on the Rig Builder. Now, the Rig Builder, this is the little tool we use to create certain rigs for our animating uses. So I'm just going to click on an R15 rig type, which is a rig with 15 body parts. R6 only has 6 body parts. It doesn't really matter the bat body shape at all, and I'm going to choose a block avatar. Now we have this block avatar right here. The next thing we can do is we want to weld the tool that we have to our dummy here, so that way we can see it while we're animating. So I've got this classic sword mesh right here, which I'm going to be using for my dummy. And all that you want to do is just put it right in front of his hand. Like so. I'm just going to do this. Drop it down a little bit. And just kind of have it where you would imagine your tool would be on the player's hand. So I've got my sword right here. Now all we do is just drag and drop this handle or the part into the rig. And I'm going to put this inside of his right hand. After that we simply click on the right hand, click on the plus icon to the right of that which should appear after hovering over the right hand. Let's go ahead and click on the plus icon and search for a weld constraint. Now this weld constraint we're going to be using to weld the handle to the right hand. So we're just going to click on part 0 within the properties of the weld constraint and set this to the right hand and the part 1 is going to be set to the handle just like this. And now what this is going to do is going to make sure that our right hand is welded to our sword mesh. Now when we click off the right hand and the rig and even workspace for now and go back up to the avatar tab and click on the animation editor, we can now animate our rig just like we would normally and the sword will come with the arm here. So now you can move the arm in whichever which direction you want to and the sword is going to be in the animation. So this is just a very simple and practical way of adding your little tool to your animation so that you can see where it's going to be while you're animating. See even our buddy Rig here likes this tip. Feel free to leave a comment down below for Rig right here. He deserves the comment. Now when you publish the animation, you're not going to be able to pick up your sword and automatically have that animation within it. We still need to go ahead and script it. So for that reason, let's click on the workspace right here, click on the plus icon and add in a tool. And this tool I'm going to rename to Sword. Or it could be a hammer if you're using it or whatever the case. After that, I'm going to grab my sword mesh and I'm going to move it up into my sword tool right here. Now what we need to do is we need to publish our animation here. So let's click on the animation editor up here in the top. And I'm just going to click on these three dots over here on the left and set the animation priority to action. As we're going to be playing this animation whenever we activate our tool, which is an action. So let's click on action for the priority and then we can click on publish to Roblox. Now I've mentioned this a lot, but when you publish something to Roblox, specifically in animation, you need to change the creator from me to whoever owns the game. So if I'm making a game within a group, I would need to set the creator from me to the group that I'm making the game in. Whereas if I'm playing with a friend, I need to make sure that my friend who owns the game publishes the animation instead of me. Because otherwise the animation is going to not work for everybody and it's not going to look the greatest. However, if you're just developing by yourself within your own game that you own, creator being set to me is perfectly fine. I'm going to set the title of this animation to Sword Swing Tutorial and then click on Submit. After that we can simply copy our ID by pressing on this little icon right here to the left of our ID and then click on close. Let's close off the animation editor and now we can get scripting after we delete our rig because we simply don't need them anymore unless you're looking to go ahead and reanimate something. So it's probably a good idea to keep him there however I won't need to do that. After that let's go ahead and click on our sword tool inside of the workspace. Click on the plus icon to the right of it which will appear after hovering over our sword tool and then let's insert either a local script or a server script. Now what you need to know about this is that if we insert a local script, the animation is going to play for our player. And that's great, but it will only play for the player. Whereas if you're looking for the animation to play for everybody, you should use a server script because that's going to play the animation for everybody in the game instead of just the one player. 
I'm going to personally use a local script, however you can use a server script or a local script depending on which one you want to use. Now we have a local script inside of our sword. Let's go ahead, I'm just going to declare a comment at the top of our script here for our variables just to keep everything nice and organized. I'm going to create a brand new local variable, which is going to say local tool will be equal to script.parent. Script.parent is simply the parent of the script, which in this case is our sword tool. So we can say tool will be equal to script.parent and that will get our sword tool right here. After that, let's drop down. We're going to say functions, just declaring another comment here to keep our code nice and organized once again. And we're going to say tool dot activated colon connect parentheses function we can delete this outside parenthesis and add more parentheses and then on the outside click enter and it should put an end right here after that i completely forgot but we need to go ahead and say local animation will be equal to instance dot new parentheses quotation marks animation and then animation dot animation id will be equal to quotation marks rbx asset id colon forward slash forward slash and then we can paste our id from earlier and that will work perfectly now after this we just want to say local debounce will be equal to false so let's go ahead and check if debounce equals equals to false then we're going to set debounce equal to true what this is going to do is simply going to make sure that we can't spam click our tool. Then we're going to say tool dot parent find first child quotation marks humanoid with a capital H dot animator colon load animation parentheses animation. And then we'll also say colon play with parentheses on the end. After this, let's go ahead and click on enter and then we'll say debounce will be equal to false and right before that we just want to put a little wait right here of about i don't know three seconds or so just for a little cooldown in between our animation being played now what this tool.parent find first child humanoid stuff does is that the tool.parent we know that whenever the player equips the tool it's going to be parented to their character we can say tool.parent which will be the player's character find first child humanoid which is the thing that every single character has and it's what determines their health their walk speed their jump height stuff like that it's sort of like the brain to a human is the humanoid to a rig or a character inside of roblox and then the animator is something inside of the humanoid that will actually be responsible for playing all of the animations on that player and we tell it to load the animation with our animation that we want to load and then we're telling that animation to Play. And all of this is going to happen whenever our tool gets activated and if our debounce is equal to false during the time that we click. So let's go ahead and click on play and we can test out our sword. Join into our game, let's go ahead and pick up our sword real quick. And first things first, you'll notice that my sword grip is a little wonky. I'm going to show you how to change this a little later. But if we go ahead and click, you'll see it's going to actually play my animation. And we can't spam click or anything like that because of the debounce, but every three seconds it's going to go ahead and play our animation while we're clicking. So that's how we can play an animation on a tool, and that's a simple way of creating a tool animation. But we need to go ahead and adjust the grip. So inside of our sword tool right here, you'll notice a grip property right here, which has a sub property called orientation. Now the orientation, we just need to swap this, I believe, 180 degrees around on the Y axis, which is this green arrow right here. And you'll see that if we do that, it will no longer be pointing that way, but it will be pointing this way instead, which is what we want. Let's go ahead and click on play and picking up our sword, you'll notice that our sword is now pointing forwards at least, which is much better. But now we need to rotate it upwards as well. And how we're going to do this is we need to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis like this, and this will be much better off. So I'm personally going to change the orientation on the x-axis to 90 degrees, and let's go ahead and click on play. So it looks like that was the wrong 90 degrees, and we need to actually do negative 90 degrees to go the other direction. And I want you to know this is completely trial and error. It's really hard to get it right the first time. So we kind of just keep on going around and testing it over and over until you get it completely right. So now we have it in a good rotation, but now we need to raise it up a bit so that it actually fits within our hand. 
So that's when we need to change the position sub property instead of the orientation. I'm going to try lifting this up one stud on the Y axis and let's go ahead and click on play. So it looks like that was not the right direction whatsoever. So we click on stop one more time and then change the direction instead. So I'm going to do one on the X axis instead and so let's see how this will work. So that is off to the side right there. So now we know that's got to be one on the Z axis instead. So let's do that one and see if this one will work better. So once again, we somehow got it wrong for a third time in a row. We need to do negative one just to make sure that it goes onto the handle instead of further up along the blade. So I'm gonna do negative one. And once again, let's click on play, but you generally get the point after the first few tries. And you'll see here that we now have a properly adjusted grip for our tool right here. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have an amazing day. Goodbye.